Buddha? Present. Kelly? Present. Vote? Here. Slat? Present. Palestini? Here. Strauss? Present. All here. All right, uh, with that, we'll, read, we'll stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, is anyone signed up to speak this evening? No one signed up this evening. Oh my God. I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, all right, now before you, you have the meeting minutes from July 21st, 2022. Please review them at this time. How are we feeling about the meeting minutes format? Still good? Everybody happy? Like what we're doing here. Now what we're doing is like a royal week. <laughs> Are there any questions, comments, concerns about the minutes as presented? Hearing none, I will entertain to approve the minutes as presented. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? Ms. Cook, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Cole. Aye. Mr. Matt. Aye. Okay, so first I've got on our agenda tonight. Um, actually, I would like to um, amend the agenda as it is current. Um, I'd like to amend and remove point 7A uh, from the agenda. Um, it's not quite ready to be talked about at the current time, so yeah, no. If you have a motion, I would appreciate it. So we move to the Questions, comments? Mr. Clark? Mr. Cole? Aye. Mr. Matt? Aye. Mr. Palestine? Aye. Mr. Rackets? Aye. Mr. Voter? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Motion passed 6 0. All right, thank you. Okay, so first thing up on our agenda as it is, um, we get to talk about Mr. Brian Thompson. And as you know, Mr. Thompson has served our community for over 40 years in various capacities, latest being the chief. Um, and he has uh, submitted his retirement. And we're pretty sad about him leaving. There's going to be some tears off some here. Um, well, I mean, he's up well, after the night, then we can cry about it, I suppose, because he can't tell us what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we, we appreciate your service and we're sorry to see him go. But he's promised that uh, for, for the moment he's not leaving town anytime soon. I hope that that's a, that's a, uh, True statement, and he's around here forever. And um, he's already volunteered that we can welcome back in at any point. We just have to find a role that fits him. Um, speech, speech. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Brian, would you like to introduce your wife? Yes. Uh, my wife, Sherry, her sister, Susan, and husband, Steve Dalton here to join us. Um, your, your officers are here to support you and witness your speech. You no, they're, the camera. No, they're, they're probably witnessing me getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> With the food, but uh, no, appreciate y'all coming out here, taking time out of your schedule, and it's been a, been a good ride. I've seen a lot of uh, interesting things happen here, a lot of things that haven't happened in other communities. That happens often, but when it does, it's usually weird. So I've got a group, great group of people here that are going to carry on. Absolutely. Good hands. And like I said, I'm always going to be here and offer my services anytime uh, for things that I've forgotten to put into place or, or pass on to the new administration. So just a matter of a phone call. Away. We've been lucky to have you all these years, and you're going to be. You no, know, I've been lucky for the people that have me. I mean, that's the way I look at it. The town kept me. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for your service. And does anybody have anything that they would like to add? Could you mention how long he'll be here still? Well, until September 9th, but he said forever. So I think we're going to hold him for forever. Anybody else have anything they would like to add or comments? Hey, Toby. 
What you're saying? You know what I mean? All right, Mr. Hedges. Okay, Brian, thanks so much. I uh, certainly thought you'd be here for as long as I was. But congratulations on your retirement. Thank you. We'll be calling you. <laughs> Guys, thank you. Looking forward to those beers on the on the deck. <laughs> They're there, always there. With that, Mr. Mayor, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. With that, Mr. Mayor, we ask your consideration of an ordinance removing the 10 ton vehicle weight limit on State Street. Uh, semis through traffic still prohibited. I'm going to ask Josh to uh, explain this to you. Um, this is actually what we tried to do a year ago, and I didn't do it quite right, according to IDOT. So we're paying that up. Yes, so last year the village board uh, voted to remove State Street as a class two truck route uh, and at the same time added a 10 ton vehicle weight limit uh, from Allen Road all the way to 72. Uh, IDOT has advised us that um, the weight, I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit. So the ordinance exempts local delivery trucks, which we presume would include things like school buses and garbage trucks that are doing business in the village. IDOT has advised us that. Um, I don't know if they said in Illinois, but definitely other courts around the country that trucking companies have been suing uh, municipalities and governments for ticketing their through traffic and not ticketing other vehicles that even if they are doing local delivery. So for whatever reason, uh, IDOT is not advising that we provide any kind of exemptions to weight limits because it's opening us up to lawsuits according to their experience. So tonight we are looking at removing that 10 ton weight limit. Uh, important. So that will that will allow school buses to continue to travel on State Street. That will allow local delivery trucks to still travel on State Street, but it will still keep through traffic from say Allen Road to 72 prohibited, uh, as long as the vehicle is at least 65 feet long. That's a, a state uh, requirement that they're not allowed to use local streets as through traffic like that. Um, IDOT has said that well over 90% of the truck traffic <laughs> are going to be prohibited through that. So we might get the odd, you know, old truck with a, a short cab and a short trailer that still travels down. But um, according to them, over 90% over of the trucks on the road in Illinois are, are going to be prohibited. So well, not to cut you off, but so like a single cab, like a day cab with like a, a, a grain dump. A 48 foot. Yeah. So like most farmers that are bringing their grain to the grain. Elevator over here theoretically would be okay. Theoretically would. And there's also some special rules for agricultural equipment that um, are a little different. So we, we'd have to look at something different um, on them as well. But yeah, some some vehicles will still be in box trucks, things like that will still be able to come through. Uh, but we will still be able to ticket the standard semis and anything larger. And there is still a standard 80,000 pound weight limit that we can continue to ticket for. So it's still not considered a state street won't be a truck. Correct. So what, what that does, there's a map that IDOT keeps um, and the person that we talked to at IDOT is the guy that manages that whole system. So uh, State Street will be taken off of that map as a truck route. Um, so theoretically, they shouldn't try to use it as a through route, but uh, knows the area, maybe he used it as one before, might try it and we can uh, get them if they try to use it as a through route. Any, does anyone? If I could just ask Chief, have we had any issues with um, trucks being concerned or angry that they're, or, or even being ticketed? No, not yet. We're, uh, you know, my focus now and has been, especially since the construction has started, to keep all the permitted loads out of downtown and routing them elsewhere. Uh, I have my overweight, over dimensioned, and stuff like that. Um, Josh here is my certified truck guy. And he, uh, He's getting some more information to assist uh, Josh on hopefully coming up with something, a better understanding that we can work with on the department. Now, I know that uh, I've been, <laughs> a lot of farmers are pretty, we're pretty upset for a while based on this because of the weight limit and all that about having to go all the way around Walker Road to go to the grain elevator. This would negate some of that as long as their trailer and truck aren't long enough. And then again, with agriculture, tractors and that kind of stuff, we're not going to be able to restrict either, I would imagine. They're exempt. They're exempt, yeah. So, the other, if I could, the other note to make here is that with State Street being a weight limit, it would still technically allow large trucks, if they could, do it safely to use the residential side streets um, because those don't have, those are just under the standard 80,000 pound weight limit. So, what this will also do is keep vehicles like box trucks and, and, um, School buses making that longer travel, it'll keep them from having to take a day to detour around State Street. Uh, so it'll be safer in that sense as well. We'll still have height limitations, correct? 
Uh, Especially when the lighting goes up. It so goes across the streets. I would assume. Yeah, there's a standard yeah. for uh, okay. trucks, right? And like I said, there's nothing uh, they have to require a permit, which would be over the uh, dimension of size. So exactly, will be allowed okay. in the side of State Street. And then State Street still would be not a loading and unloading. You know, they still have to utilize one of the alleys or the back areas, right? The semi would be able to pull up on State to uh, unload or load. That's not a, that's not in this ordinance. Um, I, I honestly have never seen them do that. Use the alleys as the side street. Okay. I think something we did learn, thanks to all the detours during the streetscape, is that sending trucks down park is kind of <laughs> the tight corners. We had, to, we had to turn trees back, we had parking on the side of the streets. Uh, that will be a handful that come under, but uh, not nearly as many as we have to have. I'm sorry, we were having a hard time hearing you over the sound of somebody's candy wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> I will speak louder. <laughs> no names. Right? Over there. <laughs> Not the one over there, too. <laughs> <chewing. laughs> That's the only reason you stopped saying it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anybody else have any other questions? I think this is just cleaning up what we've already done and makes it more enforceable. All right. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 22-18, removing the 10, be 10 ton vehicle weight limit on State Street. Um, so moved. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments? Ms. Clark, can you call the roll, please? Ms. Palestini? Aye. Ms. Dumont? Aye. Ms. Cole? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Boulder? Aye. Ms. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Robinson? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now we would ask for a motion to award at the side improvement grant to the CAVE for 75% of eligible project costs up to $27,900. And I would like to defer to Trustee Kelly. Thank you. So I'm going to um, go over the notes from the BBC meeting and then I'm going to defer to Mr. Small, who is here, who can speak more to what was discussed in person in the project in general. He is our SOD grant keeper and uh, expert. So it's uh, the address is 123 Washington Avenue. They submitted a proposal to update the facade. Things included our new paint, brick top pointing, new metal awnings, new gutters, and roofing repairs. Uh, really facade type work. Um, there was um, a motion and for a recommendation by the BBC to support a full 75% uh, percent reimbursement. Uh, it was passed unanimously. I was not at that BDC, and as I stated earlier, I don't vote. Well, I'm not going to vote in our meeting room, so I will let you know that had I been in that meeting, I would also vote in the affirmative. Um, there was a discussion, and some changes were recommended to be implemented, so I'll just well, I'll talk about what those may be and if they were implemented, uh, and that it was felt that it's warranted and a valid facade proposal um, within the facade improvement district. Uh, so the motion was made. And passed unanimously for, for making a recommendation of a 75% reimbursement. Uh, the amount is to 27900 And with that, I will defer to Mr. Small. Sure. There were uh, in the BBC meeting some questions and comments, and uh, leading up to that, just two small issues that came up, relatively minor but fairly important. One of them was the drainage of the new gutters. Currently, the building has no gutters on it. We're downspout, so the water just runs right off the roof, roof and drops on the uh, sidewalk out front. They're going to uh, install new gutters and downspouts, but there was an issue with one end of the building and uh, the unavailability of a, of a location in which to discharge that downspout. Um, I approached the applicant who's been very receptive, very cooperative about um, somehow connecting in a drain under the sidewalk so that the downspouts can discharge into a drain and directly into the catch basin. And, uh, they contacted the, um, is it Dave down at the maintenance department? The gentleman? Uh, Dave Starrett. Dave Starrett, thank you. And uh, he said, we'll work through it. Yes, we can do that. The other small item that uh, I suggested or at least brought up is when you exit the alley at the north end, and if a box truck is making deliveries and execute a right-hand turn, turn and east, the way that the awning is configured, it sticks, it doesn't stick out. It just is more or less flush with the end of the building. It's been clipped numerous times. So in order to avoid that, because part of this project, part of the scope of the repairs is to wrap that awning, there's actually two awnings, to remove the wood shake shingles and replace them with a faux copper uh, 
roof, much like uh, Peterson Fuels did a few years back. And if we're going to, uh, or the village is going to approve and support uh, re-roofing it with a new material, it would be nice to avoid that as of the future and it being clipped by a semi. So they're going to shorten the length of that overhead awning by whatever it's going to be, three feet or so, whatever it takes in order to avoid that from happening after the new roof is put on. But that's the essence of the two issues that came up. Uh, the applicant was very cooperative and receptive to taking steps to correct those measures. and. Um, yeah, it was unanimous at both the beautification and the BDC levels that based on uh, the three uh, bids and proposals that they had, uh, that we recommend 75%. There was a lot of discussion. They're pretty straightforward, pretty simple, uh, three proposals. So, but I, I'm uh, able to answer any questions that you might have regarding any of the three at this point. And from what I'm reading, just for clarification, the 27,900 is the 75%. That's correct. The total of the three bids so that's, totaled, that's uh, what the village would be reimbursing. Yes, yeah. uh, the total was about 37,200 yeah. and 75% of that if if approved by the board would be 27. That's correct. So anyone have any questions about the application as it is in front of you tonight? We have Peterson with us and Mr. Ruth uh, who operate the committee. So they I'm sure would be more than willing to answer any questions you may have. As well as Mr. Swalwell or Mr. Kelly. I just like to add that this is one of the more thorough and, and complete applications I've seen coming. I agree with that 100%. I'm really excited to see the work done. It looks amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, one, uh, I guess, a question is there a timeline that you guys have to get this completed? I guess. And when would you guys start the project? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As soon as possible. Okay. Yeah, we'll be done. Sometimes. All right. I will entertain a motion to authorize uh, the, or award the facade improvement grant to the cave for 75% of the eligible project cost up to $27,900. First. Second. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Mr. Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Anderson. Aye. Ms. Fogler. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Abstain. Mr. Cole. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Ms. Palestine. Aye. She has five and one. Seat. Awesome. We're looking forward to the changes. We look forward to seeing them all when they're done. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. Mr. Edges? Um, with that, we would ask for a motion to authorize a pay estimate. Uh, number four, to Kent County estimating the sum of $84,479.40 for work completed on the Connection Water Main Project. This is, makes the total paid to date of $558,884.49. And I'll just add to that before you uh, take the motion that uh, the shoulders are now complete on the gas road. They're just waiting for striping. And the road will be complete. And then we have some, some uh, additional engineering work and the uh, catch base to put in there. Sorry, the PRB but the project's moving along well at its Do you have an estimated, I, it's hard to do, an estimated completion date? Uh, we're waiting for combat, as usual. Um, one of the things we wait for the most, but they're, they're supposed to be up next week, and I, 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 don't, I don't have an update from our engineers, so I won't say specifically, but we're on schedule, I think it'll be finished by, by the end of September. It's a long time coming. Any other questions for Mr. Hedges or about this project? Mr. Polson is on the line from an engineering perspective. Okay, then I will entertain a motion to authorize payment payment estimate number four to King County estimating. So moved. Second. Questions, comments, concerns? Mr. Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Matt? Aye. Mr. Palestinian? Aye. Mr. Robinson? Aye. Mr. Cole, Mr. Boulder? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Cole? Aye. So before you guys uh, see the monthly reports, take time to review all three. And if we have any questions for staff, we can take this time. I just like to point out probably what she'd like to in our, our public works crew has done the work of uh, rebuilding the, uh, the salt dome. Yeah, it's great. It's all our labor safety styles. Thank you.
Anyone have any questions about the reports as presented? Just one, the new home permits. Where are we seeing the majority of that? Lenar and Tim's farm. It is. Fairly. It's up at Tim's. Okay. I didn't know if we were seeing the same kind of traction. Do you have any like, thoughts? Just your opinion. I know we don't know from the builders, but that development seems to be getting a lot of permits and moving pretty quickly. And the, the other development in town that we expanded out to the new areas doesn't seem to be pulling as many permits as quick. Do you, so, so do you have a sense of, I know the home sites are very different. That's why I'm asking. One thing is that uh, the next pod of, of homes that are going to be going online for your range of townhomes in unit M, we had a pre-con with DR Horton last week, this week, uh, on Monday, yeah. And so they're going to be starting and they plan on getting the ground as soon as they can. They've already been working with safe builds on doing some reviews preliminarily. And uh, so you'll see uh, on this report, you know, next month probably, um, maybe next month after that, they plan on having a couple of their whole buildings built uh, this fall. So that would be maybe 12 units, I think it's six units of building. So they're planning on moving pretty fast there. Uh, so that'll help catch up a little bit. Um, and then they're coming in uh, at the planning zoning meeting to do to get a final plat for their next pod in unit R um, on Monday, which is also time. Right. Okay. So let's move along. I would add to that, Tristan Kelly. That, um, I think Lenar was really, I mean, that's that's just a wonderful site there. Yeah. With the great with the high school next door, the great school next door, another great school just down the road. Uh, the access to the tollway is so close. It's just a great site. Yeah. And and Brown made a great deal on it. So they're actually selling those lots at the prices of smaller lots because of the <laughs> already had their um, their investment. So, uh, yeah, it's a really, it's it, frankly, it's a bargain. Uh, Lenar, that that development. Yeah. I, I expect to see them building right through the winter, and uh, I think we probably there's only three residents residents living there. Now. Uh, maybe just two. The third one's closed, but not yet. Uh, so they're starting to live there, and, and there's probably 35 houses. On. Now, um, when that subdivision was first developed last year. Uh, Lenar wanted to put in a bunch of foundations before it got cold because they knew they, Lenar has this thing where they kind of they know what people are going to buy, so they take that risk. A lot of builders won't do that, but they take that risk. Have we had any indication from them that they're planning to do that again this winter as well? We haven't mentioned that. Uh, that was so they had some inventory to start selling in the spring and they have it in the spring. So if you haven't been in the model, some of you will be looking at us there. It's really good. Find some time to take a look. There's also a new model being built on uh, in in Prairie uh, Ridge, so that may bring up some activity in Prairie Ridge. You probably notice there's a lot of signs all over town not directing people to all the new models. So I think our I think our builders are starting to feel the feel the slow down a little bit, so they're starting to market and sales efforts. Hey, do we have any other questions about the monthly reports? Okay, then we'll move on to accounts payable. So in front of you, you have the regular accounts payable to personnel. Anyone have any questions about the regular accounts payable to personnel this month? It's a big number. Any <laughs> questions? Individually? Uh -huh. You being serious? Or you Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I would put anything to answer when it comes to the money. <laughs> All right, with hearing no concerns about the accounts payable personnel, I will entertain a motion to approve the accounts payable personnel in the amount of $80. <laughs> <laughs> uh, questions, comments, concerns? Ms. Clark, maybe we need two votes on some of this. Mr. Close. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Bowden. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Matt. Aye. Ms. Best. Aye. Next, just. Next, you'll see the accounts payable, the, the regular monthly accounts payable, and that's a fairly larger number. Not, not bad. Compared well, compared to $80, it's a lot of money. Yeah. 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 I know. I thought they were missing. Do you have any questions about the regular accounts payable? I just have one question. You're serious? This just one question, yeah. Uh, page 62. Uh, Midwest Integrated Companies, the annexation deposit limits. I just wasn't sure what annexation. So um, they have put placed a deposit on additional acreage um, over on Briar Hill Road. She wasn't. No, that's fine. Midwest Integrated Companies. Yes. So the uh, Briar Hill Ventures, Midwest okay. Integrated Companies, 
um, additional acreage over on Briar Hill Road or off of Briar Hill Road, okay. and and um, they're not going to move forward with that particular part of their plan, so they're getting a refund for that. Okay. Thank you. By the way, they started moving dirt this week. Taken quite a few weeks off. I was a little concerned about the progress. I talked to Steve. What are they Are they getting a, a refund from us? Yes. Uh, any administrative uh, charges? Not for this one. No. <laughs> Okay. Sure. Sure. Any other questions? Then I'll approve. I will entertain a motion to approve uh, the regular accounts payable in the amount of one hundred twenty-six thousand three hundred and seventy-three dollars and twelve cents. First, okay. I have a second. Questions, comments? Ask for the call vote, please. This voted. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Aye. Hi. Thank you, Mr. Hedges. Okay, now we are here for Village Board Committee reports. BDC. Uh, BDC will be meeting next Wednesday at 6 30 here at Village Hall, where we will continue to talk about the business development of our community. And uh, I'm guessing that I saw it was tabled on the last meeting, so the focus is probably going a little bit back to the uh, economic development plan and strategic plan. That we've kind of tabled for a little bit because there were a lot of the facade breaks that had been on. So uh, we'll continue that great work. Public oh, really. relations. All right. Uh, we met you know, three weeks ago, um, discussed a lot of the things that we claim to be the coming newsletter, but we do have one more meeting next Thursday, the 11th at 6 30 p.m. So if you have any ideas or questions or things that you want to see in the newsletter, come talk to us. Yeah. Okay. Public works. Hey, yeah, it's in your packet. Has everybody seen it? I know the public works was out today, striping all the all the white lines and white cross marks, and hashes everywhere for back to school. Um, and uh, we're looking at uh, doing some more black topping, but we need, we need a hot box to keep the asphalt hot. Uh, other than that, on the public works end. I'd like to thank the chief for all of his years of service. I'm sure in that job you spent many sleepless nights and get woken up, and uh, you'll truly be missed. Thank you. Budget? Um, yes, the budget committee met uh, on the first, um, had a lively discussion. The topic was the facade grants and the excess of what's been done. So we wanted to kind of talk about where we're at, what the plan has been in the past and moving forward. Um, the thought is we're not going to have our funds in, um, you know, coming up and then how to handle it. So there was a discussion with uh, all of us in attendance that the committee was, was there plus uh, President Reed and um, I just I'm, I could just read the motion as to what was finally just determined um, from the budget committee's end of things. Um, but it was that a motion was made to recommend the following directives going forward for village staff in connection with the facade grant program, including after consideration one, after consideration of the pending application, no more money to be expended this fiscal year. Um, we will already be 69,000 over what was originally budgeted. Um, but we wanted to move forward with the application that was pending. Uh, two, that the facade grant program rules and the application itself be reviewed and adjusted to address the concerns raised by the budget committee. And three, that moving forward, the BDC be made aware that the budgeted amount for the facade grant program is, is going to be considered a hard number with no coverages. So that planning can be done from, from the BDCN and the Beautification Committee as well, just to kind of know where we're at. So, um, it was about an hour discussion that kind of went over everything, and there's a lot of different things in the village that um, we could really use to put money towards. And so we wanted to be able to continue with the direction and the commitment that we had made for the $100,000 per year, but then be respectful of all the other budget needs. Um, any other members that want to jump in with what was kind of summarized? Okay. Um, so that was the, the priority of the dis discussion. And then um, President Reed did come and talk to us about um, the resignation of the chief and moving forward, um, you know, what financially that will mean for the village and what we need to do. Thank you. 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 Thank
in order to identify someone um, to take his place. That's not possible. So they can take his position, but they're not taking it. You got it. You got it. So that is the budget. I have a question on that. So yes. when a SOD application comes in, it goes to the staff first before it goes to beautification and to the uh, BDC. So is is that motion the recommendation that once the budget is hit, staff is not to pass on any applications for consideration because the budget has been hit? So I think that uh, based on that motion, and the, what we're going to do is we're going to work closely with the chairman of each committee and commission, and then in our, with our trustee rep and come up with a process that makes more sense. Well, according to the motion I just listened to, it was very clear that it's a hard number and that no applications would be accepted beyond that number. Correct. You're, you're, that's that's so what my did. question on clarification is, are you saying that it would be on staff to stop the application from going further if the, based on this motion, that the recommendation was for staff to stop the application from coming because that was a moment further? With that, or, with that, my question to you is if a business owner is looking for a facade, they already, they contact the BDC prior to contact the staff. They contact the BDC, they have conversations prior to filling out anything with staff. They, they may, and then that would be on us to say there's no more funds like you're right. and, and, and that's what we're after because it's hard when they've been tentatively uh, uh, stroked along that, you know, we could probably get it through, it'll be close to come here and then have us tell them no. I think well, we've done so, that before, though. We, we as a board have sat here and not done what the BDC has recommended and done a lower amount for a for, Reason. But we we want the committee was in agreement that the BDC has a hard number. They're going to follow that hard number. However, staff and BDC want to handle it. That's up to them. But the people that are wanting the facade money contact the BDC long before staff. Understood. Is the stance of the budget committee then also that 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 rigor applies to every budget line item in the budget? Well, that's for the facade grants that we're giving money out for. That, that I understand, but we have, that's a budgeted line item for a hundred thousand, let's say, and you're saying that's a hard number. So then is, are the other budget line items treated in the same manner that those are hard numbers? Of course, that is where we all start with, okay. with all of that. So, I mean, something comes up that's unexpected, it, it has to be addressed. Um, you know, a pipe bursts or something happens that we need to take care of, a roof goes and we need to, that's an unbudgeted expense that we need to then look at. Um, but this particular one is, is excess money that is considered and put aside for a grant um, to be used to beautify the city. Um, discussion was also had about the amount of money that has gone into the downtown area um, between streetscape and the five years that we've been doing it from 2019 on. That we see it's been about, it's about a million and a half that, we put into that we've put into the downtown area. So um, concerns were also raised about um, the fact is that we can't get equipment that we need for, you know, like the sealer for the public works because we don't have it. But then at the same time. That is a grant that we could hold this down. No, I, I guess, I guess it's not. Like we took 1.5 out of. No, I think, oh, no, 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 no. I think the clarification was is that there's been multiple points that the village has had some culpability in the, in the appearance of the downtown for several years. In, in our lack of code enforcement and lack of and whatever. We are where we are right now. It's not just as a fault of business owners or property owners not taking care of things. The village has had some responsibility. So I think it's, it's in relation to the actual dollar amount of money being spent downtown, that's the amount of money that's been invested, regardless of the funding source. I think I that, that's where that. that. And I have no concerns with what the, the budget committee's put forward. I'm, I was seeking some understanding on what exactly was passed. And whether or not that's looking to apply, I think emergency funds on pipe breaking is one thing. But if we budget X amount to go to the chamber and then they come back for more, are we going to do more? Are we going to say nope? That's what was budgeted this year. Another organization that we budget X amount to donate to, they come back for more. We can say nope. That's all we I think I think we we take a pretty hard stances typically in relation to the budget in the past, and there's not there's always been. That one exception, but I, I'd like to think that in, in my time here, we stick pretty close to this. I, I know Mr. Swallow can attest to this. The budget has come up on a conversation on the, on the facade grant program itself of how do we, it's a balance of you want to have a hard budget, but also, so do you make 
everybody apply by a certain date or do you deny things at the beginning because you don't know what's coming in later or do you just tell people sorry we spent it in the first two weeks and there's nothing for the rest of the year um i think i think when the bdc was developed i was here and they were given a number of amount of money to spend and when that amount of money was spent, that was it. I think we can. So, I, I think we can the question, I, I, the, I the question is, that. it's up to the BDC to uh, issue these amounts on merit. And all of the business owners downtown know that every year there's a facade program. All the business owners downtown, except the new ones, know that there's a certain amount of money that can be spent. And we have to hold that line to that. Completely agree. My comment wasn't that we're, I disagree with that part. My comment was just that we are also having discussions and looking at the program of how do we ensure that we can give the best chance for anybody throughout the year, knowing that there's a hard well, number. I think and so I think those are things that we're going to go back and have discussions of, and then we will let you guys know and let the board know what the recommendation from the BDC is that the time review notification committee as well. I would assume that a business owner being savvy uh, uh, and, and is really truly looking to uh, fix the front of their building and looks looks into it. Uh, it don't take much to figure out that you got a hundred grand and the program ends each year. Uh, so it's first come first serve. And I, I think they all know it. And that's something we're going to talk about. Because okay. most of these grants that we've done are uh, on this facade stuff is code enforcement. That's a different discussion. I understand that, but I'm saying a lot of the grants disagree with that. A lot of the money that they're using uh, is to bring stuff up to code because we didn't have a code enforcement officer. So, like Mike said, we're we're just as guilty as them for, but it's first come first serve. So I think we're at a, we're at a good point now. We're we don't have any other applications in front of us. We've kind of made a decision that we're not going to spend any more money until the program's kind of looking. And that was part two. I, I, I think that this is let's look at the program. Let's work with the commissions and work with staff and figure out what's best and how this is going to be able to coexist with each other. You know, if there's a certain amount of culpability that the like because Jay and I have talked about it, the budget and I committee and I have talked about it. Um, I've even talked a little bit with the chairman of each committee or commission rather. I, I think it's just time that we address this and we will. And so that's where that's where this needs to be. And so just to bring that in this is, you know, from the last meeting and the last grant that came forward, I voted no um, because of the fact that it was moving over budget and considerably over budget. So with the hundred thousand, we're now at one hundred and sixty nine thousand that we passed, which far exceeds almost doubles, close to double um, what we had originally authorized. So as part of that, I mean, that was part of the discussion that we did. But the second item in the motion is that the facade grant program rules of the application be reviewed and adjust it to address the concern. So as to how and how you want to do it, et cetera, that comes to the application and we defer to the committee to decide the best way to do that. And if you decide to change the amount to limit it to a certain amount, um, to have a first come first serve, to have, I mean, divide it up amongst time limits and applications due, et cetera, that's up to the committee. Right. But we're just asking that the committee then understands so it's not like, well, they've given us money before, let's push it. Kind of understanding that, that that's and there's just, always exception to rules, but we want to really sure. put that hard stop. Just a couple of clear, clarifications. One, I'm not arguing with this, but this is what we're talking about, right? So um, I don't think any, anybody here should hear what I'm saying is arguing against what's been passed. The evaluation of the program itself is something we've already talked about. It's already on the agenda for this fiscal year before you guys talked about this. So we're in alignment in that as well. Uh, all applications that were put before this board that were over budget were done so in consultation with staff that there was funding available for that. Otherwise, they wouldn't. And we had those discussions. So anything that that committee did put forward was on the recommendation that there were funds available because of underspending in other areas and that there wouldn't be a concern from staff on the budget. Otherwise, they wouldn't come forward. So while this year, it looks like a lot has come forward, they didn't just come out of the blue. So we do our homework to make sure that we're not putting something forward that the village would be like, there's no, no money, what are you guys doing? Right? There was a lot of discussion around that. So I just don't want it to appear like I'm arguing that what we're doing is the wrong thing. I, I, I understand that. There were reasons why we're over 
where we are. It was based on recommendations, and it is something that the committee is talking about. And that is understood. Um, and we know, I mean, it's truly, it's the board that also passed all of them. And staff does work with the, the BBC committee, the education committee, as well as the um, applicants. So that's understandable. And, and this particular year, we had ARPA funds. And, and you know, downtown reconstruction. And downtown reconstruction. So it kind of was a matter of, you know, we've got everything ripped up. Let's just keep moving forward. Um, but there was also the, statement made that, you know, those ARPA funds could be used for other things as well. And it went towards beautification and run a roll there. It used for that sealer, um, crack sealer that we were, the public works could use or something for the police department or something on the list of, you know, multi 15 million, I think is what we have on that list of projects that we'd like to get done. Um, this doesn't come even close to that. I mean, these are nickels and dimes compared to the amount of projects that we have. Uh, but we'd like to have a little bit more input in determining when the excess park off go to it was there and it did go at that point. So. We, we did discuss that as a whole, the program is still under budget um, from when it started to this point. I, I don't out of the total amount that could have been spent, we were under 17. Yeah, so. so we did measure the total yeah. amount that should have I mean, been under 100. Part of that budget discussion, then, like if we're as a board, if we're considering okay. anything that's over budget, we should probably be weighing what are the alternatives this could be spent on, and is this whatever we're discussing beyond facade? Yeah. Is this more important than that? And if it is, as a board, at least we can make that call then. Or our judgment, whether it is, and we all probably won't agree, and that's a good thing. Right. Um, but I don't know that we've ever had that part of a discussion on any any type of item put before the board on a spend expenditure that's above whatever was expected. We haven't looked at like, okay, here's item A. It puts us 50k over, but that 50k could really be used over on these items, and that's needed a little bit more. So where does the board want that 50k spent? I don't know that we've had that. We kind of did with the bricks. I mean, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I wasn't, that was the last time that I remember. We, we, we've had similar discussions, but not over, not over all of it. I think we're just trying to find our way, right? I think that it's a good conversation. I think it's, I think it's a good mindset for the board to be in. Yeah. You know, I, I would just, I would just say that we need to use the right terminology when we discuss this because the BDC and the beautification committees are both um, independent of the facade improvement program. So as we talk about history, the BDC was founded before the facade improvement program, and it's and and it's independent of the BDC. The BDC does review it, but they weren't founded at the same time, and their funding limits were not discussed when the BDC was created. And so it's just important that we talk about the facade program in general not related to individual commissions. If they wanted to have commission, like at the end of it, the commissions are the ones reviewing it. But I think we need to find where everybody fits. So then who are you saying is responsible for redoing the facade program? No, 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 no. What I what I what I am saying is is the the BD, the BDC is completely separate than of this program. Okay. And so I, as we talked about this, everybody keeps using the wrong terminology together with okay well when the BBC was founded they were given a limit I'm sorry I'm not calling you out I'm just saying that it's independent of that the facade program is completely separate of the BBC it's a separate program administered by the village and that's that's what needs to be addressed not the BBC's role not the beautification's role that kind of stuff so let's address the program itself yeah I don't think we were talking about addressing the BDC I just I, I thought you meant somebody else was no. supposed to do it, so, okay. Trying to clear it up. Anyhow, any other thoughts or discussion about the budget and committee and their discussions? Any new business or other announcements tonight? Uh, this is our last meeting before the first day of school, so I'd like to wish a very happy and safe and educational year to all the students going back on August 16th. I have a, uh, I don't know if it's new business or not, but reserved comments that I have for the chief. I would assume that on the 8th, are we having a retirement celebration here in our village meeting? For the chief? I'm not going to go into any specifics about that. There would be a very nice <laughs> party at, at the Copper Barrel that Friday night. 
Okay. So there will be an opportunity to express gratitude. Yeah, so like so people will be around for several more board meetings. I think. I, have. I just didn't know if there was. Blew that surprise out the water. <laughs> I wasn't talking about a surprise party. Yeah. I was just saying we're going to have something that's out there. Don't try to see it. So we're not in place. Are we posting? No. We're done. There might be some material out there. Uh, it's Hawaiian. It's Hawaiian theme. <laughs> okay. You will be you first in the great Sure. That will be the chief's last day on the payroll, so he has no choice about that. <laughs> so we will be instructed. Yes. And I have a partner. <laughs> Not gonna get, you're not getting away with just turning off the light. <laughs> Good question. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I have a question. Uh, I know we haven't finished the facade yet of downtown, here, but the black posts that are out here, uh, is there any, uh, is anyone looking at whether they are hard to see at nighttime? I drove down there through the night and I thought that black on black is not really good. I don't know whether we're considering whether some type of reflection should material should be put on the well, like straight down on the side. <laughs> you, you, did, did you did it did the new striping on the, the lane kind of blow get you off kilter from going out off the lane into the black uh, ballards? No, uh, it was just an observation uh, going down there in the, in the third lock, and I don't know whether the street lighting, the new street lighting, is going to be brighter or it illuminate should, that. It should, it should, and there's also going to be plant life in that behind it. So, I mean, that'll make it stick out some. I think, I think when the greenery gets in, I think the greenery will make a big difference. I think when the new street lights get in, the street lights will make a big difference. I well, think when the crosswalks go in. A non mountable curve separating you from the bollards, so you're going to have more damage before you get to the bollards. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that, um, I, think it, I think it's a valid point, and I think that we just need to be patient when we need, when we need to see what it looks like when it's done. Because I just, I just think it's not done yet, and I think that maybe when it is done, it'll look different. That was just an observation. And we, we, have, we have six street lights now, so we'll have a total of ten, so we'll have a lot better illumination. Yeah. I, I do have one question on State Street. Uh, uh, a resident has said to note uh, a question, and I didn't know how to answer this one. So either EEI or if you know, Mr. Hedges, on the northwest corner of Jefferson Estate, up on the sidewalk, so right near the James showroom, up on the sidewalk, we have that dirt area where there's going to be plant life. In that dirt area is a storm drain grate above the sidewalk. It's actually below the sidewalk. Well, but it's above the curbs and not really where storm drains are going to be. Is that where it's supposed to be? Yes. Okay. We're not worried about the dirt washing into it or... No, that, that, that whole area is going to be... Planted first of all, so that okay. won't be loose dirt for very long. But there will be uh, okay. So we're not worried about like the runoff going in there. And then is that to catch drainage from the sidewalk, or it's it's part of the entire drainage system from the State Street? I, I, several people have asked the same question. Okay. Um, and I, I think at this point maybe I'll pull out the drawings and see. Okay. How, how I would have so, Yeah. There's I just I had never seen that kind of a drain in that position before. Elsewhere, and so that's why I thought I would ask because I didn't know how to answer the the resident that asked the question, and I figured I'd ask the people that probably know. I'm, I'm definitely not smart enough, but I looked at it too, and I was like, uh, it's, it's kind of different. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm not going to ask Tim because he's not a streetscape engineer. Uh, totally he's engineer no. So I will look at that though. And get back I get so. <laughs> okay, well, I just I thought I would. It was brought to me and I, I didn't know. You know I, I wasn't here. Give her I, I, we had six inches of rain. I think I was on vacation that week. Um, and I don't know what happened out there. I'm not sure the black dirt was actually there yet. But we're going to find, we'll have a nice heavy rain. And I, what I can tell you is that somebody actually, a resident posted on Facebook one time. I'm driving down northbound lane downtown. The first time it feels like I'm leaning to my left. I thought that's great because that's exactly what's supposed to happen. <laughs> you can see it. Even when I was walking on the left side of the street today to Copper Barrel, and you can't really see the drain, the 
to the street to slope it. And we did that. We, we've never really had standing water problems with State Street, but now we have a really good discussion. I'll look into this. I'll look into I just didn't know. Like I said, I saw it and I was like, I'm not smart enough to answer. There are at least five people in this room who have asked me the same question. Oh, so, okay. And some of them at this very table that I'm sitting at. <laughs> Mark so always comes up with the best question. All of you. Yes. And a couple up there, too. Okay. If I can add to since we're on the street scheme topic, uh, since it's been open, just from the you know, my perception, it doesn't seem like anything else has happened or been done on it. And I know it's not finished. I know the greenery is going to be in September, uh, but I know we're doing the grand opening um, right at Coon Creek right before the parade. So I was just curious when the bricks are going in and the clock, and is that all supposed to be ready then for the grand opening? The uh, crosswalks will go in Monday. I just sent like you were all copied on an email that went to no business today. We will close street state street for one more day as we told the businesses way back in April. Um, yeah. and that's scheduled up mm -hmm. Monday, and that'll all happen in one day. Um, we waited for 72 to be open for 20 Um and then uh so the clock will be installed as well before um Mr. Swell is sitting over here. This family clock will be going in uh the clock is going to be donated, I should say, and I remember your father said. Right? Uh, we'll be going in before the Creek, so we'll be there. Um, and the planting and the landscaping will not happen until se September because of the planting season. And the street, it's too hot. And the street lights uh, are due to arrive toward the end of September. It's too hot to plant street lights, too. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I, I they think don't it, this may have been asked at the last meeting, but you know, <laughs> the silver colored street lights, these will be black, so it'll be a very dramatic difference and very ornamental. Yeah. <laughs> And there'll be ten of them instead of just six. And, and kind of we're after the street lights is when the festival lights go in. Okay, well, we don't have any festival lights. So. Oh, I thought we had, we're working through that. Working through that. We uh we okay. we were we were hoping that, that our light poles that we had purchased would have supplied or carried the weight of the lights that we were looking at. That is not the case. It's not dead in the water as of yet. We're looking at several different options. Um, some towns have fixed the buildings, but then we get into like height requirements and stuff. So we're looking at maybe fixing the branch tree there, fix the lights up, or have some other investigations of different types of lights. I don't know. That's I don't necessarily know that it'll be completed this year, but it's something that we're committed to doing. Just, just, just to remind you, speaking of budgets tonight, just to remind you that that was something that that when the bids came in it was an alternate. When the bids came in, even the second time around, that altered it didn't figure out. It was two hundred eighty thousand um, dollars. So then we looked at trying to hang. Really, probably I think it was, we never even got a price, but probably eight or ten thousand dollars with the lights from uh, the existing poles. But the the engineers told us that those poles could not handle it. It wasn't very heavy, only three or four hundred pounds. But the wind load and everything else were great problems. So uh, it'll be a separate project, and there's nothing budgeted for that issue. So we don't have somebody in town who's a light person who donates the lights to Coon Creek, and we're hoping we may find something like that. But it's not, it's not dead in the water, it's just not going to have an issue. All right, any other comments, questions, new business, announcements? Toby? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> that we were asking. Sure. Hi. 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 Hi.